IPR, some, when you say make in India, it gives opportunity for a lot of manufacturing things, it gives the job for a lot of people because as we say that uh, we are the youngest lot in the globally. About 60% of the people are below 35 years and the skilled people that may give some job opportunities. When I am saying the IPR is from a different angle. Uh, I, I don't know whether you might have heard me I'm speaking something on this in other forums. I give an example of uh, Apple iPhone. The manufacturing co cost of a iPhone 4S or 5S in the retail market about, it sells it for about $670. If you break up the cost of that, it is available in any open forum, you can see that. Uh, everything of Apple is so far is manufactured in China. Foxtron is the company and a Gongchu province. It survives on the Apple things. Nothing is manufactured in US, not even a uh, nut and a bolt. Everything gets manufactured in China. How much do they get out of it? Uh, the present rate is sure is $1.78 per hour. It costs about $15 to $30 for just manufacturing, I mean packaging, manufacturing everything, goes for China, the labor cost. Then around uh, $100 goes in, 97 to $100 goes in components which are manufactured again in China as well as some coming from Japan and all the thing is there. That, and the $97, goes to AMCs and software and all things, part of which comes to our TCS or you know some $15, $30 come to our TCS and Infosys and Wipro and all the things. But the major share of that is $364 out of the $670 goes to Apple as IPR. Okay, you can imagine 50% of the people, I mean profit, goes to as IPR. When it is manufactured, you get how much of the things? You get the things. That's what I'm saying in the IPR, which makes the Apple the richest cash rich <laughs> company. I think $16 billion profit in the last half a year or so for Apple. They can, with the cash itself, they can buy out IBM. That sort of cash rich comes from the IPR. When I'm talking about this, that's what I said, IPR is important for a country if you have to be economically strong. Defense side, I said both IPR is important because it has to give some security and I give some commercial security also. I am saying that's what industry has to do, some innovative things and particularly in defense sector. It gives them security also, manufacture design in India, gives them security plus financial value. As a country, I'm somehow feeling sometimes this is IPR, why you are neglected, I don't know. Because some constraints are there, we have to move in that. If you are considering in 1984, India and China were at the same at par. If you are comparing GDP, papers published, patents done, PhDs produced, 1984, if you take the Balma figure, we are at the same time. About, we used to produce about 3.5 5% of these, the Thomson Reuters report, it is again open, available in the open forum. We used to do about 3.5% of the global knowledge. Okay, innovative index or something, right from research papers published and all the things it taken at. At present, I'm um, again, 1914, uh, 2014, Thomson Reuters, we are about 4.5% innovative index or the, what you call it, uh, this thing. And in that 3.6%, I think, in psychology and 6.2% in, uh, you know, materials and all things, we're about 4.5% to of the things. China, at present, is 27% of the global knowledge generated, patent, published, and all things. U.S. was there, 33%, they have come back to 31%. So that gap, I'm saying, that is the thing which is the thing which had to be built in. We have to encourage patenting and publishing and research oriented thing. This comes from R&D. That is, uh, I always pledge whenever I meet the industry people, please invest in R&D. So that we'll become IPR rich, protected country, 
from the defense angle as well as economically rich country if we are generating the money. So the one thing I thought I will share it with you. Uh, particularly since I am in the cyber security area, I said the most uh, important thing to me is the security. So it has to be designed and make in India. And uh, as you are aware of the some incidents happen in US now, the US government has made, uh, particularly from Homeland Security, that all the product has to be made in US. So that sort of a philosophy will come from a cyber security angle, every country will base upon that because any product which is very not verifiable, then we have a suspect from the cyber security angle. From that we say that if internal security is with the things we are coming in, like IoT of things is coming in. As I mentioned that we are likely to be 400, 400 odd billion dollars uh, importing things. And we are saying that uh, globally now they say that there are more mobiles than the people on the world. I think six, there are more mobiles than six billion mobiles are working now. Global population is six billion. I think the mobiles are about seven billion. They are statistics saying. These things are coming in, particularly India, we have got the fastest growing, uh, what I call IT market, some 30 to 40 percent growth rate is expected. If we don't capture this market, then we have a weakness in our system. We should do design and make in India, and this is the opportunity for electronic industry. I feel that we should not let it go. I humbly request you all the people to contribute. I'm saying when I'm saying uh, it is uh, make in India means I'm not saying only government sector. Government sector cannot do all these things. Even though security angle, sometimes we say it is safe people have to do it and all. I don't think that is going to stay for long as Madam, we're opening up a private, including defense and uh, internal security. The huge opportunity is there. I do hope that uh, everybody takes care. So from that angle, when I talked about Vivekananda at the beginning, we made some recommendations. Okay, I thought I'll share it with you as uh, Dr. Sharma has already mentioned. Two, three things. One is the in incentives for uh, manufacturing in India. We found that time some industry people only told that if you manufacture in India, the tax structure is such that it doesn't become economically you know, uh, viable compared to imported products. There are two, three structures of uh, you know, taxing is there which makes that, you know, we are not economically viable. So that is one has to be changed. Then uh, we are saying that uh, preferential market access. That makes the incentives for Indian manufactured product that will go into the thing. Then one more thing which I would like to talk about is Dr. Sharma has talked about is the skill development. Yes, in the defense also we are finding uh, there is shortage of skill. And uh, we are trying as Department of Space has uh, this own school for uh, uh, training. We also have one university called DIAT in Pune. But that is not the solution what I feel. It is basically when you are doing the skill development, it has to be in the national level. In particular, cyber security, we are saying that, I, I don't know, somewhere it came in newspaper only. Real expert in cyber security we have got in thousands, whereas required in lakhs. And this is the area is going to open up with IoT and things are coming in, uh, internet at home and all things globally. So we need to do our skill development also, wherein uh, all contribution has to come from academia, industry and all things. With this, uh, I would like to conclude thanking uh, ISA to give me opportunity to talk to you and uh, share my thoughts. And again, uh, I would like to compliment for this choosing that app topic and do hope uh, that we in India, as Team India, as our Prime Minister has said, will rise to the occasion and make a realistic design and make in India by the next five to ten years. Thank you.